So the Kansas City Chiefs do not go wide receiver in this round, but they do get two really good players who some people had as top 10 players. Uh, I did not quite uh, have McDuffie as a top 10 player, but I did, ha I did have Carl Loftus as a top 10 player. Carl Loftus is legit awesome, and there's some issues on his tape. I don't think his, his tape is as awesome as maybe some of these other guys, which is probably why he fell, but the guy got results. His, like, you know, all those numbers that typically translate well to the NFL. I know people don't love looking at college stats, and that's because in certain positions it's worthless, like quarterback. But, like, a pass rush win rate, if you do well at that in college, you do well at that in the NFL. And Carl Loftus had the great pass rush win rate. He, the guy's stats are outstanding. His production was outstanding. Let's get into the film, talk about the pros and cons, and then kind of we'll talk about him a little bit in a broader sense after, uh, you know, sort of towards the end of this video. Let's start off with this play, because I think this is a great example of just showing what Carl Loftus can do. Again, the production with Carl Loftus is awesome. A lot of pressures, uh, which is always very cool to see. But it's not just that. His tape is good as well, but it's good in a different way than maybe someone like Trayvon Walker's good plays are good, or even like a Kayvon Thibodeau's plays are good. Carl Loftus is much more of a technician. He wins using hands in a lot of ways, which that's good. I mean, listen, however you win, if you win at the college level, you typically win at the NFL level. That's how it works. And for him, it's not maybe the uh, best highlight reel that he'll put on. But at the end of the day, if you're getting pressures, what's the difference? So this play is a prime example of that where he's going up one-on-one -on -one against a right tackle. He's going to be doing a swim move here and watch how well he pulls it off. I mean, look at how he is going to just get right by that tackle and immediately get a quick pressure. Uh, there was other pressure on that play as well. But again, just a great play from Carl Loftus. And it's not just that he does this, but it's obviously consistency. It's not just do you win, but do you win consistently? He wins and he wins consistently. Now, there are some negatives on his tape as well. Uh, I think that, you know, he is someone who will get pushed out of the game in the running game at times. He's a big enough guy that I don't think it'll be a, a massive issue at the NFL level, but it clearly happened. This is an example where it's going to be a right tackle blocking him one-on-one -on -one and watch what happens. Look, as you see, I mean, you know, there was a little bit of a double team there, but still, he got blocked out of the way you know, pretty well. Uh, the running game was able to work on that play. He was not able to do much. Not sure if he could have done much on that play. That was going to be a tough play for him to to find a way to, you know, get into the play, but still, that is something that you can see. This one's another one where, again, I'm, I'm picking out some of the not great plays by him. I'm, I'm not saying that literally every running play, he is a mess, because the running game does matter. I know that we typically care more about pass rush. Pass rush is more exciting, but, you know, how well you do in the running game, that definitely plays a role, uh, and, his run defense, you know, it's not bad, but he just, he'll get pushed out of the way sometimes. This is another example of that where I've circled him on the field. And while there is, you know, it looks like three guys at one point got, uh, you know, a hand on him. They did knock him out of the way. But the flip side too was like, hey, he took on that double team. And because of that, that allowed someone else to come up and make the tackle. So he got the extra attention. And that's something that you would see him do at times is get this extra attention. Uh, and he was still able to get, be productive, or at least on plays like this, good stuff was able to happen. I also want to talk about this play. This is kind of a good and bad play with Carl Loftus. So again, I want to talk about his technique a lot. Uh, his technique is really good. He constantly will create pressures by doing a plethora of different moves. Doesn't do too many inside moves, as in going from the, you know, if it's a left tackle, uh, going to the left tackle's right. So on this play, it would be going closer to the top of the screen. He doesn't do that too often. He's not TJ Watt levels of explosiveness. No one's going to you know, uh, make that argument by any means. But watch how when this play begins, again, he's able to kind of uh, get that left hand, that the the left tackle's left hand, out of position to so that way he can bend around the edge. That's what he wants to do. So again, that stuff, very good. He does it consistently, but there is one negative. And the negative that I did notice that, that definitely happened on film is, okay, if you're constantly doing this and making this work, Typically, what do you do if you're a left tackle? All you really can do is kind of put your right hand on Carl Loftus's left hip and try to drive him behind your quarterback, right? Quarterback's in the pocket. Quarterback has a specific spot that they're going to be. So if you can drive him past the quarterback, you know, it can give you an extra second. Now, at the end of the day, you know, eventually Carl Loftus will get there. But the idea is you're at least creating enough time for your quarterback to make a throw or just make a decision and get rid of the football. As you see, Karloftis does get pushed 
behind the quarterback on this play. And quite frankly, that is something that you would see on film. That's probably my biggest negative with Carl Loftus is he would get pushed behind the quarterback at times. But again, it wasn't frequent enough for me to be too concerned. It happened. It was very real. But at the end of the day, this is a guy who wins and he generates pressures. And that's why you draft a pass rusher, right? You're drafting someone who you believe will generate you some pressures. And that's what Carl Loftus can do. So yeah, I mean, listen, like I said, I like Carl Loftus. I think Carl Loftus is a really talented player. And for the Kansas City Chiefs, who needed edge help, uh, this is kind of great where it's like, listen, you have someone like a, you know, you have a Frank Clark who, I don't know if he's going to return to form. He was awesome, uh, you know, a few years ago. Can he get back to that? I don't know. Well, no, it doesn't really have to because you have Carl Loftus who should be great right out of the gate. And your defense was not good last year. It had its moments, I guess. But as a whole, it was not consistently good. It just wasn't. So going out and making sure that you get a, you know, really talented edge rusher, again, someone who, like, if you just look at his production, you'd have him drafted uh, ahead of the guy who was drafted first overall, uh, if nothing else. So that alone is very exciting. And like I said, you know, this is a this is a very, like, money ball type move. Uh, this is a move that you do where you say, okay, is this guy, is some of his film a little bit clunky? Sure, but... He's still getting pressure, so who cares? Like, that's just kind of the way I view this stuff. If you're winning, you're winning, and he would win. And I also want to be clear, because I kind of talked a little bit about, you know, his his losing a bit in this video and, like, kind of the issues that he has, uh, maybe a bit too much in this video. Like, the guy is still has some impressive stuff on tape as well. Like, it's not like his tape looks like a bum out there, uh, and you're like, oh, this won't work at the NFL level. I think his stuff will work at the NFL level. In fact... Guys who primarily win with power, typically those guys do work at the NFL level. It's the speed rushers that actually typically don't work at the NFL level. Uh, and guys with hands are especially what works at the NFL level. And like I said, his hands are fantastic. That's how he gets the majority of his pressures. And I fully believe that he is someone who, uh, you know, with the Kansas City Chiefs, should be a difference maker right away. So, again... You traded uh, Tyreek Hill uh, to get these, you know, draft picks and not just this one, but, you know, several other ones. I can't remember if it's this one or the other one they got with Hill, but regardless, uh, you know, they were right next to each other. So uh, is Karloftis going to be better than Hill? No, but he's a hell of a lot cheaper and you're getting more than just that draft pick and you had more holes. So that's the logic behind that trade. That's the logic behind this pick. Maybe my favorite pick so far in this draft. Uh, that's what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on Carl Loftus, the newest member of the Kansas City Chiefs? Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.